I like to say Bardstown's a typical Kentucky town, but it truly isn't. It's very special. There's a lot of conspiracy. There really is. It is like that everywhere you go, you just hear more about Bartown right now because of how it's been. Bam, 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 bam. I'm Shay McAllister. Welcome to Bardstown. 45 miles south of Louisville, Bardstown, Kentucky is home to 13,000 and a series of secrets. Five people, five stories, five unfinished endings. And we know they all have at least one thing in common, this beautiful, historic small town. Nestled between Kentucky's rolling hills. Well, this town really has a lot of charm. Beyond the bourbon distilleries. Full of friendly southern hospitality. Beside the Bluegrass Parkway. It was a Norman Rockwell painting. It, it was a very idyllic. This tiny town takes you back in time. I like to say Bardstown's a typical Kentucky town, but it truly isn't. It's very special. Most celebrated for its signature spirit. Orange. Bitters. Bardstown is called the bourbon capital of the world. Do the buttering, very important to do that. We stir. Like With an emphasis on agriculture and tourism, those who live here are proud of their old Kentucky home. I love Bardstown, it's so beautiful. But beyond the bourbon and the beauty, there's a story. We've like a, a fractured bone that we've never put a cast on. It's still there, it still hurts. A story that starts in 2013. Hello, hello. Officer Dan, Officer Dan, Bluefield Road. That was the worst day of my life. Can you about the status of the officer? Is he conscious? I, I believe he's dead. The next chapter, only one year later, when a teacher and her teenage daughter are home alone. Kathy was a, a teacher there in, in Bardstown. Um, that's actually how they got reported. Uh, you know, someone needed to go check on She didn't show up to work that, that next morning. They weren't bad people. There, there was nothing about their, their public personas to suggest that. And the fact that they, they died so gruesomely. Three victims, no answers, and the story doesn't stop. July 2015, a missing mother starts the next chapter. She never hurt anybody? No, I don't think she's lying. Sorry. I haven't been here. <laughs> And for this family, the story only gets harder when the missing mother's father is shot and killed. I don't want no bad priest forgiveness to me. I'm talking about hell, we're going through hell here. Yeah. Jason Ellis, Kathy and Samantha Netherland, Crystal Rogers, and Tommy Ballard know their names learn their stories. All of these cases are unsolved. These cases are unsolved, but none of them are considered cold cases. The definition of a cold case varies from agency to agency, but most consider a case cold when they stop getting new tips, leading to new evidence. Detectives on the Bardstown cases tell us they get new tips every week. And on our first case, investigators say they have received literally thousands of tips. When Bardstown police officer Jason Ellis took his oath, he promised to never betray his badge. Named Officer of the Year during his time on the force, he was dedicated to serving the public until May 2013. Hello, hello. 
He was a loving, caring man. You know, he was uh, um, a, a good cop, very active cop. Ma'am, can you advise the status of the officer? Is he conscious? I, I believe he is. He loved, you know, the boys and I. He was a family man. He was outgoing, he was fun, he was energetic, his um, personality was infectious, he was always the life of the party, and <clears throat> he just, he was amazing. A dedicated public servant, parent, and partner, Bardstown Police Officer Jason Ellis embodied all that was good. My name is Rick McCubbin. I'm the retired police chief from Bardstown, Kentucky. Uh, Jason was a, um, he was a, uh, he was a chief's cop. <laughs> he was a great guy. Working nights on the force with his canine partner, Figo, Jason was a drug officer. But on May 25th, 2013, he was working alone. Jason had opted to, to leave Figo home that night since he was not in his canine car. In, a, in just a pool car. Like every other night, Jason responded to calls. 139 dispatch, be traffic stop. He popped into his son's baseball game. He got called away in the middle of the game, um, and we didn't get to say bye to him. He took a suspect to jail, and then he signed off for the night, leaving the Bardstown Police Department around 2 a.m. 139 out of camp. Driving the dark and desolate Bluegrass Parkway, Jason was heading home. The officer took his typical route, winding around exit 34, seeing something up ahead, something in the road, something that would make the officer stop. I've just got off work and there was a, the police car is sitting in the middle of the road with the lights on. I said, what the hell happened? We didn't know what it was. It's a tree across the road. And I, I, I didn't know what it was. And I got out and I went up there and looked and it's him. It just feels like it's not real. OK, can you tell if he is breathing? No, sir, he is not breathing. Body temperature is cold. An officer killed in the line of duty is the kind of crime that rarely goes unsolved. Officer Ellis was the first Bardstown police officer killed in the line of duty in department history. He is one of 874 officers in Kentucky killed in the line of duty, according to the Officer Down Memorial page. Right now, police agencies are offering more than $200,000 in reward money for any information leading to a break in his case. When an officer is ambushed, there are obvious questions, like who would want him dead and why? Those questions started just after 2 a.m. on the Bluegrass Parkway, as Officer Ellis's brothers in blue rushed to the scene. This is Sherry out of dispatch. Uh, we have, have a squad call for a coroner. I will believe we have an off, one of our officers down. Uh -oh. What happened? Um, we're not sure exactly what happened. He got off at 2, and the next thing we know, we're getting a call on the radio from a passerby. Is it a car accident? We don't know. We, some passersby got on his radio and kept saying, officer down, officer down. All we know is it was a Barstown City Police officer. How much lighting you got on the trucks? I don't know how much you think. Uh, quite a bit. We've had a officer killed. Oh, my God. He died in the county? Uh, yeah. Oh my God, who was it? Uh, Jason we Ellis. We think it's Jason Ellis. Jason Ellis. Don't cry to me, don't cry to me. You've seen things you shouldn't see. You've been wrong, the same as me. The 
officers were silent, everything was quiet. Uh, the police tape was around the scene and, and uh, I walked up and the sheriff at the time was there, and one of the troopers, and um, I said, what, what's, tell me something, and, and you know, he said, he said it's, it's Ellis and he's gone. The police chief walked the scene, wanting answers. And I said, what the hell happened? And I remember him saying, I don't know. Said, what do you mean you don't know? <laughs> and they said, we don't know. Investigators engrossed themselves in the scene as the sun began to rise. Eventually determining the officer was ambushed, the killer strategically placing debris in his path. They pulled out the branch so that he would be forced to stop his car um, and then enter just the right angle so um, they could get the shot off. Multiple shots tore through his torso, the officer assassinated, and then his brothers in blue had to tell his wife. It was in the middle of the night and they knocked on the door and just, yeah, it was like an out of body experience. I mean, your worst nightmare coming true and it's devastating. She had questions, but no one had answers. No one's had answers since the day he died. What could I have done as chief could, or could I have done anything differently? Maybe, maybe nothing. But this will be the this will be the uh, the darkest hour of my whole career. He was greatly loved. He'll be greatly missed. May we make it part of our own life's mission to ensure that he is never forgotten. After the officer was buried, and while detectives started searching for leads. Bardstown Police Chief Rick McCubbin made changes within his department, hoping to protect his other officers. So I changed the policy that you do not go off duty until you get to your destination. In other words, like in Jason's case, he, when he was driving home, he looked down, oh, it's two o'clock, off duty. We have no idea where you are at 2 a.m. So I put the policy out that um, I don't care where you're going, don't need to know where you're going, but when you get to wherever you're going, that's when you call off. Our investigation continues after the break. When tragedy strikes in a small town, people tend to talk. When a mother and daughter are murdered, people wonder why. This horrific crime happened less than a year after Officer Ellis was ambushed. Meet the Netherlands. A mother-daughter duo, described as all that is good. They were two really good people who tried their best to make their surroundings better. Even in the face of tragedy, losing the family patriarch to cancer, the pair stayed positive. Samantha was a highly intelligent young lady. Um, she was getting ready to go to prom. Um, you know, she was looking forward to that. She got her prom dress and um, everybody was, her family was excited for, for her. Looking forward to life's big moments until that life was abruptly cut short. I miss them more than anything in the world. No one realizes just how much I wish I could trade places with them. Off a windy Bardstown road. On a seemingly normal night. Kathy Netherland and her daughter Samantha were attacked inside their home. Well, Samantha was um, stabbed and, and, um, and her um, throat was cut. Uh, that's I've been out there for a long time. And then uh, and Kathy was uh, also had knife wounds and was shot as well. The details are dark, describing that night from April 2014. We loved them when they were here on Earth. We love them now since they're not here. Um, so we, we try to focus on that, but there's no question it's very hard. The clues have been few and far between, but a black car caught on camera near the home that night is considered the largest lead. Whoever was in that car was in that house during the time this crime was committed. They never found that car. They never named a suspect. And I want to know why. 
Why would somebody go and attack my sister? Why would somebody shoot my mother? Detectives say they've questioned everyone, even family. I can say that uh, the, the older daughter has been cooperative in the investigation and uh, has talked to us and spoken to us and keeps in touch with us at all times. I know that there's rumors going around, but we can't stop the rumors. Rumors not enough for an arrest. The detectives still searching for the facts. And the fact that they, they died so gruesomely, um, the fact that that kind of thing could happen right here in this area, it shocked a lot of people. Seven months after the brutal murder of the mother and daughter, the Netherlands Bardstown home was sold at auction for $41,000. The next year, a new playground was dedicated to Kathy Netherland, beloved Bardstown Elementary School teacher. Two years, three violent murders, and no answers. It was unusual for the place deemed America's most beautiful small town, but it wasn't unheard of. And for one Bardstown family, it was all too familiar. You know, I have people tell me that God has a plan for everything and everything happens for a reason. I don't know that I believe that. They say time heals everything, but you don't. You, uh, unless it happens to you, you know, you get up with it in the morning, you go to night, you go to bed with it. It's never, never off your mind. How can one family withstand so much heartache? One family, two murders, a third is missing. The Ballards have endured hardships hardly imaginable. The first for the family happened 40 years ago. Tell, can you tell me what happened to your daughter? She was, uh, she was seven and a half months pregnant. She wanted a divorce and she, he wanted a divorce and she, Sherry wouldn't give it to him. At only 19 years old, a pregnant Sherry Ballard Barnes left her Bardstown home to run an errand and never returned. From what we're told, they knocked her in the head and took her down there on Bellwood Road to his trailer and got out, got a gun and took her someplace and Shot her in the back, left her for dead, took her car over to Jeffersonville, Indiana. Police found her car 45 miles from her home. Her body was missing, not discovered for years. He dug her remains up and he set her on fire. We got about a cigar box full of Sherry's remains. Police would later charge her husband, Eddie Barnes, and his friend, George Weir, with her murder, and a jury would convict them. After several agonizing years, the Ballards finally found justice. Sherry was a good person. Finally moved forward, even finding peace for 40 years until Till learned his granddaughter, Crystal, a 35-year-old mother of five, was missing. I thought, well, they done the same thing to Crystal that the ones done to Sherry. And everything from 40 years ago instantly came flooding back. Say it when uh, somebody murders your family, there's nothing you can do about it. And like I said, if, if you've done something, you spend the rest of your life in penitentiary, and there's nothing you can do in there. Now here, maybe you can do a little something, keep your eyes open and ears open, you know. We don't want pity. We just want answers. We want justice. We don't know pity. Sherry Ballard Barnes was 19 when she was reported missing in January of 1979. Her future niece, Crystal Rogers, was 35 when she was reported missing in July 2015. Crystal is one of 105 women missing in Kentucky today, according to NamUs, the National Missing and Unidentified Person System. She is the only woman reported missing from Nelson County. We'll be right back.
A mother of five missing. It was 4th of July weekend, 2015. At first, no one worried. At first, her family thought she would come home. But when hours turned to days and days to weeks, worry was all anyone could do. If you wander off too far, my love will get you home. If you follow the wrong star, my love will get you home. My daughter didn't deserve nothing that happened to her. This property is the last property that she was seen at, as far as we've been told. If Chris was out there and can see us, just we're hunting for you. My love will get you home. Give me a minute. I should be used to this, but um, Crystal was my first. Um, she weighed four pounds and 12 ounces when she was born. Her parents pride and joy and eventually a mother of her own. Crystal had four children before meeting boyfriend Brooks Houck. We were very picky parents, I won't lie. Uh, we wanted what was best for our daughter and all the other relationships we didn't think were best for our daughter. So when she met Brooks, I think she saw the opportunity, not knowing where that was gonna lead her down the road. Crystal and Brooks shared a home and together had a son. The couple and their toddler were together the last night Crystal was known to be alive. Supposedly they went to the farm and they walked back in the field to feed the cows. My daughter's not gonna walk back in the field in the pouring down rain, especially with her baby. Um, I just don't see her doing that. And then they left the farm and went back home and Brooks went to bed and Crystal was still up on her phone and Eli was running around playing and supposedly she was not there when he got up. She was just gone. Gone. But Sherry Ballard says Brooks didn't tell anyone his girlfriend was missing. Sherry didn't know her daughter was missing until days later. And when it was Sunday and she still hasn't called, I started panicking. Sherry and her husband, Tommy, rushed to the Nelson County Sheriff's Office to file a missing persons report. While they waited for word of Crystal, they got a call about her car. Her brother called me and said that um, they had found her vehicle in the Bluegrass Parkway. Crystal's keys, purse, and phone were inside. So we all went out to the BG where they found her car and we stayed there until they took her car away. And then that night we got up a search and we were out till like three o'clock in the morning searching the farm that backed up to the BG where they found her car. Sherry says Brooks never helped the family search. I found it odd that he didn't go to the sheriff's department with me and place the report with me. He didn't do anything. Walking through woods, ponds, and fields, the family was discouraged when weeks went by with no sign of Crystal. I'm kind of facing reality. I don't want to believe it. But... I feel like she's not here. And then October brought some answers. When the former Nelson County Sheriff announced Brooks Houck was the main suspect in Crystal's disappearance. It makes me feel a little better, but we still haven't found Crystal. And then the Sheriff added, he's not sure the family ever will. She has vanished from Earth. And uh, I think it's safe to say that she's dead. Brooks Houck was named the main suspect in Crystal Rogers' disappearance just months after she went missing, and on the same day that the sheriff announced, he thought she was dead. But it's been four years since that day, and Brooks Houck has never been charged. Detective John Snow has led the investigation since the beginning, but he retired in July of this year. Now, a new team of investigators has taken over. We'll call it the A-team. Uh, we're looking outside uh, agencies and um, we'll just leave it at that, the A-team. Could a set of fresh eyes on the case make a difference? Our investigation continues after the break.
Tommy Ballard led the search for his missing daughter, Crystal Rogers. He dedicated his life to looking for her. Everyone said if someone found Crystal, it would be Tommy. Until Tommy was taken too. For 16 months, this man searched. I never dreamed in a hundred years something like this would ever happen to us. Walking through woods, wading through water, wanting nothing more than to find his missing daughter. It'll never be easier, I know, but finding her will give us some closure. When detectives served a search warrant at Brooks Houck's family farm, Tommy Ballard was there from dawn until dusk. It's good to see that many people out here. I know, like you said, we've searched thousands of acres. I'm not exaggerating either, thousands. And a lot of water, we got our own divers. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's a relief to see them out here. I'm not frustrated, I'm hopeful. I think we're moving in the right direction. We just want to bring her some home. I'm Angie, I'm a member of Team Crystal. I've been with the family since the very beginning. This is one of the areas that we went and searched in because there's, there's a pond back here. And you know, at the time, water, 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 everybody says probably in water, she's probably in water, or woods. Angie, alongside Tommy, organized search parties for the missing mother. You would go out every single day with determination like this, Let's pray this is the day, this is the day. And then you would go home and cry. They used sticks to probe the ground for the smell of human remains. They turned every piece of trash just in case. We didn't know. You know, you you, you could have found, you know, somebody could have thrown an old dirty bottle down because they buried a piece of jewelry and there's fresh dirt and they just needed something to throw on top of it, make it look like it sat there for a long time. Nothing ever panned out, no lead ever led to Crystal. Still, Tommy didn't stop. He was the best daddy. Tommy wasn't gonna stop. He was the best husband. He was not gonna stop. Tommy didn't stop until someone stopped him. I still can't believe he's gone. In the months after Crystal went missing, we got to know her father, Tommy Ballard. I talked about that relationship on the podcast we released earlier this fall called Bardstown. Take a listen. I met Tommy during the many searches for Crystal. As we drive around Bardstown for interviews, I tell Jessica about the kind of man he was. I knew Tommy. I worked with Tommy. I went on searches with Tommy looking for his daughter, Crystal. And it's pretty rare in journalism to be there with someone before they're a victim. I knew him as a person. I knew the kind of snacks he took on searches. I knew you know, the way he looked at his wife. It's just personal, it's different. Ranked number one on the True Crime Apple podcast list at one point, the podcast has reached millions across the country since its launch at the end of August. It has nearly three and a half million downloads to date and has stayed in the top 50 true crime Apple podcast list all 12 weeks since its release. You can listen to the 10 episode podcast called Bardstown wherever you listen to podcasts. We'll be right back. Tommy Ballard was an anchor in his family and a leader in the Bardstown community. He even talked about running for sheriff, bringing change to the local justice system, but that campaign never got started. Tommy's mission was brought to a sudden stop in November 2016. Every morning, the sun rises above Bardstown. It's so hard. Just like the day before, just like the days to come. He was just my world. For Tommy Ballard, the sun rose for the final time on November 19th. 2016. You know, I have people tell me that God has a plan for everything and everything happens for a reason. I don't know that I believe that. Um, why would God want my husband to be murdered?
Days before Thanksgiving, Tommy and his grandson got into his red pickup truck. Heading to the family property, it was an early morning hunting trip. Sherry Ballard saw them out the door. And I remember going back to my bedroom. And on the way to the bed, you know, I, I just said, God, look over them in the woods today. And I said it out loud, you know, I, don't, I guess I was talking to God out loud, but, and I laid back down. Um, and it was probably 25 minutes maybe, I got the phone call. A phone call from her frantic grandson. And he was so upset and he's like, he's like, Mama, Papa's been shot. Um, I was panicking, you know, I was trying to throw my clothes on and get ready and I went in the bathroom. I told Trent and I said, I'm gonna call 911. Calling for help and then racing through red lights, Sherry was desperate to be by her husband's side. And I ran over and I knelt down to Tommy and I shook him. And I just begged him to get up. I was just laying there. In the middle of his property, a property he knew so well, Sherry shook her husband. I mean, there was no blood, no nothing. So I kept shaking him. And the last time I shook him, and he had blood come out of his nose. And that's when they pulled me off of him. I know he was gone when he got there, but it didn't hit me. I didn't realize that. Um, it's still hard for me to realize that today. Kentucky State Police swarmed the scene as Ballard friends and family lined the drive. A single shot through Tommy's chest ended his life. At first, officers called it a hunting accident, and Sherry called that a disgrace. This is my husband, and this is a murder, and you know it. And you're saying it's a hunting accident? No, I'm not okay with that. At first, police called it a hunting accident, and then a death investigation. Now they say it's a murder. WHAS 11 investigative producer Andrea Ash explains what it was like trying to get clarity in the hours after Tommy was killed. Walk in the door, run to my desk. Of course, I was struck with shock and kind of disbelief. So I called the Nelson County Dispatch. I called Kentucky State Police. This was an accident. It was some sort of hunting accident. And that just never felt right from the very moment that we heard about it. It's something that's always stuck with me. Where did that misinformation come from? We had to find out what actually happened. All hands on deck. It was like a bomb went off in Bardstown and we all felt the aftershocks. It'll stick with me until the end of my career. And I hope that by that time, we will know what exactly happened to him. Kentucky State Police say they do consider Tommy's death a homicide and they investigate it that way. We'll be right back. Police have had their eye on one man in Crystal Rogers case. That's Brooks Houck. The Nelson County Sheriff's Office named him the main suspect in her case in October of 2015. Since then, there's been police interrogations, polygraphs, even a perjury arrest but how continues to walk free. Here's a look inside that investigation. Inside the Nelson County Sheriff's Office, behind the brick walls, Brooks Houck answered the detective's questions. What do you think happened? I don't, I'm shocked, I do not know. Days after his girlfriend was reported missing, he told the detective he last saw Crystal after a night at his mom's farm. It was late and they were at the home they shared. I went to bed immediately. Brooks said he couldn't explain how her car ended up on the side of the Bluegrass Parkway. I guess the, the biggest problem that I have is that most women are not going to walk away from their purse and their cell phone 
in the call. I agree with you. Brooks answered questions, and then he answered his phone. It was Brooks' brother on the other end, Bardstown police officer Nick Houck. I know you told me innocent people have got jammed up, but if you're telling me to leave, I'll get up and leave. If you want me to, if you want me to. And then the interview was over. Taking his brother's advice, Brooks left the interrogation room. Nick kind of injected himself in a, in a, in a, in a way that I didn't like. Um, ethics and integrity sometimes are all we have. And um, I didn't think he displayed a good uh, example of either. It didn't sit right with Nick's boss, the Bardstown police chief. And then, when Nick refused to talk to investigators, Chief McCubbin had had enough. But I said, I am going to the mayor as soon as you leave this office and you are not gonna wear a badge. You, you do not deserve to be a police officer. Um, and he was very, okay. <laughs> I thought, wow, okay. Nick was fired from the Bardstown Police Department on the same day his brother, Brooks Houck, was named the main suspect in Crystal Rogers' disappearance. It was October 2015, and under a different sheriff, though newly elected Sheriff Raymond Penaroa stands by the naming of the suspect. I would say he's still the uh, main suspect in the case. Um, nothing has changed in, in the investigation that leads us to believe anybody else is uh, the, the main suspect. But Brooks has never been charged. What people don't understand or the misconception is, yes, we can go make an arrest today, but if we don't have what we need, we go to trial and he walks out that same day and says, yep, I did it. You can't charge him, it's double jeopardy. So uh, the main part is you gotta get your evidence, your ducks in a row, and once you have that, um, you, you'll move forward with the case. Because moving forward is important, but this sheriff says more than anything, he wants to get it right. Uh, I believe it's uh, what we do, our job, and uh, I believe the family deserves that. Um, we may not have a body, but uh, at the end of the day, closure for them um, closer for this town. Brooks Houck has never been charged or arrested, but one of his employees has been connected to the case. Danny Singleton was indicted on 38 counts of perjury in 2015 in connection to Roger's disappearance. Prosecutors said he lied to a grand jury about his whereabouts on the night that Crystal went missing. He pleaded guilty to lesser charges, 38 counts of false swearing in 2016, and spent less than a year in jail. Our investigation continues after the break. If you've watched these stories and felt frustrated, you're not alone. According to the Murder Accountability Project, this community has a 54% clearance rate, meaning investigators here in Bardstown and Nelson County solve about half of the crimes. It leaves people wondering, what will it take to get answers? What will it take to get justice? Take a trip to Bardstown and you will see the signs. That is a visual evidence of the determination of the community. Yard signs for the missing Crystal Rogers and murdered Tommy Ballard. No one wants this hanging over Bardstown's head. Memorials for ambushed officer Jason Ellis. We moved away and I've distanced myself from that um, so that I could try to feel safe and bring my boys up as normal as possible like I know Jason would want me to do. A playground dedicated to Slade teacher Kathy Netherland. Because as long as we remember them, They'll never truly be gone. The victims' legacies are written into the town's story. It's not typical to have this many uh, cases, this, this many death investigations going uh, in a three or four year time period in a small community. It just doesn't happen. T-shirts beg detectives to close the cases 
as candidates this fall made promises to prioritize them. I want to make sure that it is a huge priority in the Attorney General's office. Still, the lack of answers leave even officers wondering why. The thing is this, you look at all these cases and what do they have in common? Look how much money is out there. Somebody knows something. I'm sure you could use $250,000. Still there. But nobody wants to say nothing. Whether it's his case, Crystal's, Tommy's, the Netherlands, there's money out there. Somebody knows something. Somebody knows something, but who? So many people know my story now. And when will they share their secret? I'm not very holy, but I pray that something will happen. I, I just hope they pay for what they've done. Until then, the unknown holds these families hostage. When the day comes that people come to interview us on how we feel because these crimes have been solved, that's when the big party will start. This community will celebrate like you've never seen it before. The theories about what's happening here in Bardstown are endless. Thousands weighing in on social media with questions and comments about the cases. In our Unsolved Insider group, even people involved in the investigation, like former police chief Rick McCubbin, are taking questions and digging into your theories. You can jump into that discussion right now by connecting with us on Facebook. Just search Unsolved Insiders and hit join. Now you know what we know, so we have to ask, what do you think happened? Who killed Jason Ellis? Kathy and Samantha Netherland? What happened to Crystal Rogers? And who shot Tommy Ballard? Any information should be reported to the Kentucky State Police. For the Unsolved team, I'm Shay McAllister.